Hi, want to try a new build for your insect glaive? Want to try be a wizard? Yeah, well, wizards are in this game, sorry. But we have something close. I'm sure you've heard of the insect glaive at this point. Introduced in Monster Hunter 4 as a weapon capable of aerial combat, with a very solid and satisfying form of grounded combat as well. Unfortunately, this is not a guide on how to smack stuff with your stick. Instead, this will be a guide focusing on abusing the Sunbreak expansion's newly introduced Awaken Kinsect attack. This is a build I like to call the Insect Mage. I started off by watching this video over here, I'll link it in the description, and thinking to myself, hey, what if I did something really really stupid and tried to use nothing but the Kinsect and this new Silkbind move and pretended to be a wizard or mage or whatever. And to my surprise, it actually worked half decently. Now for a disclaimer. I'm not going to tell you that this build is any better than a full melee or aerial style build. Those builds are very consistent and have lots of data from people chasing the mana to back it up. In fact, the example that I showed you was just an extremely lucky run where I managed to get everything to work consistently throughout the course of the hunt. I just made this build though because I thought the concept was fun and I decided that I wanted to push it as far as I can. That being said, is it still good? Yeah. Actually, it surprisingly works a lot better than I thought it would when I initially tried it out. In fact, it only got more viable in the Title 3 update due to Awakened Kinsect getting a pretty decent buff. Plus, the way uh, damage works, you can actually make certain fights a little bit easier using this build as well. That being said, I do have my own complaints and nitpicks of this playstyle that I'll be addressing as well, since I want to be honest about the negatives about this build as well. Oh, and a final disclaimer, there are no gameplay changing mods present. Just visual stuff like Hunter Pie for my heads up display, Coven's for my TPS tracker, and something to change the font. I'll leave the links in the description below. Alright, now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk about builds. Now, I'm not your mother and I can't tell you how to play. But, when I had this build in mind, I decided that I would completely forego the use of my melee attacks, both grounded and aerial, and just focus on the kinsect part of the weapon. And because of that, I could safely ignore some skills that are present in a lot of meta melee builds, such as weakness exploit, crit boost, power prolonger, that sort of thing. First to start off with are the weapons. There are two that I recommend for this playstyle. Either the Devil's Halberd or the Staff of Laertus will fill your needs. These both have a high Kinsect level with Blast Element, but different decoration slots so you can use either one or the other to suit your needs. Next is the Kinsect. We're using the Bilbo Bricks for raw damage output with Blast Powder, and a tiny bit of support with the Healing Powder. As a footnote though, there will be more I'll talk about later when it comes to Kinsect choice, but as I haven't done all the research into it yet, this information will be purely hypothetical and will be saved for close to the end of the video. Armor can be mostly up to you based on what utility skills that you need, as this build can be pretty customizable since you only really need three skills to pump out as much damage as possible. In fact, the skills that I am using to try to pull the most damage out of this are simply Wirebug Whisperer, Blast Attack, a Level 2 Teostra's Blessing, and the Teostra Soul Rampage skill. Wirebug Whisperer, so we get some cooldown reduction on the Awakened Kinsect. Blast Attack, along with Teostra's Blessing and Soul to help stack some extra numbers into your Kinsect's attacks. And I know there's a Rampage skill in base game that can increase the damage of your Silkbind moves, but as far as I know, that isn't the decoration that you can use in Sunbreak. At least as of the creation of this video. I'll show my build anyways, just so that you can have some hope work to copy down, but just note that I've already done a little bit of curio crafting to get my current set how it is currently, so your mileage may vary. To combat this, I'll be leaving a link in the description to a website that I used to actually make this set in the first place. You simply put all the skills you want into it, what sort of charms that you have, and it'll scrape every armor set in the game to give you the build that you want. 
I myself personally went with a lot of defensive and recovery utility skills, since a benefit of this build is that you don't need a lot of defensive skills to make it work. Heartbreaker as well I fit in there, since there's a really nice benefit to this build that I'll be talking about later. You can realistically switch out what I have with skills that you like, because as long as you're alive, you'll be doing damage. What works for me might not work for you, and so on. Now we can talk about what you'll be doing in combat. Gameplay here is simple enough. You send your kids decked out to get three extracts, position yourself a fair distance away from the monster, and use your awakened kinsect attack to deal damage. Your kinsect will shoot out in a straight line in front of you before stopping. Depending on how much extract you have and how good your positioning is, this spin will hit multiple times and have a higher motion value. Each hit you land with the ability when your kinsect has a powder skill will spawn a new powder cloud as well, which we'll be talking about utilizing in the next section of the guide. We'll try to talk a little bit about positioning here, as where you use the skill is just as important as when. Of course you want to try to use the skill when the monster is stationary enough that you can guarantee as many hits as possible. And of course for people who have a higher skill level than me, you can probably lead your shots and do just as well if not better since you'll be hitting things more consistently. That being said, slopes and small obstructions are your worst enemy in this regard. Since Awakened Kinsect shoots out in a straight line in front of you, it also stops on the first solid thing it hits that isn't a monster, including walls or the floor. You have to be mindful of where you use the ability to make sure your kinsect actually lands in the hitbox of the target. This comes with practice, and you'll eventually learn where you don't want to be to make this work. Next up is a small thing I don't think is all that well known, since I don't see a lot of guides talk about it, and that's about your other switch skills, and how they affect Awakened Kinsect. Specifically, Slot 3. After using Awakened Kinsect, your hunter will charge at the monster and vault off of them. Getting hit or colliding with the monster in this period will negate some or all the damage depending on what you get hit by. After this though, your hunter will do one of two things based on what is in your third switch skill slot. If you have it set to the default Jumping Advancing Slash, your hunter will vault vertically into the air. If you have it set to the Kinsect Slash though, your hunter will retreat horizontally away from the monster. So far with this build, I've had more consistency with the backwards retreat Kinsect Slash provides, but you are free to experiment as well. An important thing to note is that there are some times when you might position yourself perfectly where you'll land the Kinsect hit, charge forward, and fly over the monster, thus skipping the vaulting portion of the skill. This usually happens to me more often when the monster has been knocked down or is small enough to completely fly over them. Most of the time though, you're going to end up colliding with them. It's going to be inevitable, and that time in the air is going to be time you'll wish you had on the ground in order to take advantage of the next part of your attacks. Now, the main reason we're picking up Bilbo Bricks as our Kinsect of choice is because of its innate skill, the Powder Vortex. With your weapon drawn, simply hold down your Kinsect aiming button, send out your Kinsect, and then press both your light and heavy attack buttons at the same time. This will cause your Kinsect to quickly gather up every nearby powder it has produced and add a multiplier to the powder's potency, before automatically detonating them after a short period, causing large amounts of damage and healing in the explosion radius. The damage here is pretty high, and it's really worth it to detonate your powders this way, rather than hitting them with an attack. And herein lies my main gripe with this playstyle. Your second worst enemy right next to solid objects. Unfortunately, due to the vaulting portion of Awakened Kinsect Attack, this leaves your powders plenty of time to be detonated by other hunters just doing their job, as you helplessly land from your jump. And unfortunately, you're going to be seeing this a lot in your hunts. In the back of your mind, you'll constantly be thinking about the dopamine rush that could have been from detonating all the powders yourself. If you're taking this build into a multiplayer lobby, you have to be aware of your ally's positioning as well. There are a few things you can do to offset this, but due to the nature of how powders spawn and how they chain and explode every other powder caught in the explosion, it can sometimes be a frustrating aspect since it's lost damage that will add up over the course of a hunt. 
This is the part where I beg Capcom to change the way that this works, either by making a 10 second delay before other hunters or can interact with your powder, or uh, even making a skill that doesn't let other people touch your powder at all. Well, I mean, the latter is unrealistic because I guess someone can use a healing powder in a pinch and that would get in the way of it. Uh, but the first one would be really nice. Please, Capcom. <clears throat> right, okay. There are still times, of course, when you can make the powder work out. There will be times when someone doesn't accidentally set off your powder and you can detonate it. And it feels really good when you get the chance. And unfortunately, the only time you can realistically force this is by aiming your Kinsect away from other hunters. If everyone is attacking the front of the monster, you can try to head to the tail and aim your Kinsect there. This will give your powder enough breathing room to actually be active by the time you make it down from the air, thus allowing you to safely detonate them and rake in that burst damage. So yeah, unfortunately there are a few negatives you have to be aware about when considering this build. For solo play, the only thing you have to worry about is the monster detonating your powder. This isn't as common, but it can happen. Positioning yourself for the perfect awakened insect can be tricky at times as well. If only because your Kinsect will not stop on the first monster it hits, but it will stop on any terrain that it touches. And with the nature of how Awakened Kinsect functions, you can end up whiffing a lot of your attacks, which can feel disheartening. Whiffing over and over again can feel like missing your attacks with a greatsword, for instance. You'll also be giving up the reliability of free earplugs by keeping your three extracts. But if you can get past these downsides, you can get lots of good consistent damage that you can dish out at safely at a medium range. For now, before I leave you off, I'll leave you with a couple more tips this weapon has to make playing it a little bit easier. First off is the ability to reposition your powders. You can cancel a powder vortex prematurely by recalling your kinsect as it gathers the powder. This can be useful if the monster has moved just out of range of the explosion, and you don't want to waste the powders. From there, it's just a matter of calculating the time used to reposition, and if it'd be faster to gather enough extract for another awakened attack. Second, I know that I said that you should aim for three extracts whenever you can, but sometimes you might be in an awkward position where getting your last extract just isn't feasible. Using awakened insect attack with only two extracts isn't the worst. It has a lower motion value and doesn't hit as many times, but it's better than beating your Kinsect against the monster trying to get the same extract over and over again. Third is what you can do if the monster you're fighting is moving too erratically. If you already have your three extracts but can't find an opening to use Awakened Kinsect, I myself like to mark the monster with pheromones. This will cause Powder Kinsects to automatically attack the monster on their own, and create new powder clouds every time it hits. You can then use the Powder Vortex to detonate them yourself for some pretty respectable damage. Fourth is Monster Hit Zones. The damage of Awakened Kinsect ignores monster defense and will 90% of the time hit for maximum damage, even against parts that other weapons will bounce off. This includes Rajang's arms when it's enraged, gold and silver wrath tails, and pretty much every part of a Basarios when it's completely solid. This, combined with Part Breaker, can make it a lot easier to break monster parts that can be frustrating to destroy by normal means. Failing that, you can at least cause more flinches, granting your allies more opportunities to attack. Fifth is that your Kinsect will copy your weapon's elements for its attacks as long as it's a severing type. So, if you have an Insect Glaive with a high Kinsect level and a respectable amount of elemental damage, you could potentially get away with non-blast-based weapons if you can take advantage of how many times a Waking Kinsect attack can hit its target. There's still lots of stuff to experiment with when it comes to this build. I even thought about using a dual extract Kinsect just to see if I can get more consistent damage off of Awakened Kinsect in exchange for giving up your powders. And yeah, for raw damage output, it does. So, potentially, if you get tired of your powder clouds getting blown up by anything that isn't your vortex, you can possibly give this a try as well. I tried the build out with the Monarch Hallucinid, and found that while it hits a smaller amount of times, instead of the five that Bilbo Bricks has at three extracts, Hallucinid only hits three, but it has a higher motion value to compensate. So, potentially less useful for elemental damage, but if you're looking for more consistency, give the other Kinsects a try as well. And finally six. 
I know I said that I'm not your mother and I can't tell you how to play your video games, but I highly recommend dressing the part and putting a wizard hat on your hunter. If only because if you're playing an insect mage, you gotta look the part too. But hey, that'll be it for this guide. Thanks for sticking it out this long, and I hope you give this a try. Not for optimization or for the highest damage in build, but maybe because you wanted to try something different and have some fun while doing it too. And who knows, maybe as more people try out this sort of playstyle, things can get more refined and more info can be found about squeezing just that little extra bit of damage out of the build. Well, thanks for watching, and happy hunting! There we go. Ooh. Hi, sorry, I am re-uploading this video uh, because two reasons. One, I messed up the positioning of a script thing earlier. Embarrassing, I know. Uh, but two, I found uh, what could potentially be some tech to make this a little bit better. Um, I found that if you um, use your awakened Kinsect attack, as the Kinsect is running out of stamina, either by using the pheromone mark and its auto attacks, or if you just have it out hanging out and you didn't recall it, uh, if you use the awakened Kinsect attack just as the stamina reaches zero, you'll skip the vaulting portion of the, uh, of the attack. Specifically, you'll just do a little, little like, piddly little boost forward. It's it's gives you enough time to kind of stay on the ground to detonate the uh, powders, but um, unfortunately, it doesn't spawn as many powders. So you're spawning less powders, but you are potentially getting more chances to get the powders off, which will be useful in multiplayer sessions. It's probably not worth it to do this, but, you know, it's something that I've found out, so there, there, there you go.